Hi, everybody. This is Gary Sotko. I'm here with my partner, Jeremy Julian. Good afternoon, everyone. We're the Restaurant Technology Guys. We're so excited today. We're so fortunate to be here in Raleigh, North Carolina with our host, uh, Golden Corral. We're going to do the recipe roundup at Golden Corral. Our special guest, Ann Perez, Vice President of Information Technology. Welcome, Ann. Thank you. Glad to be here. And Karen Amstutz, Manager IT In-Store Systems. Welcome, Karen. Thank you. Good to be here, too. North Star Recipe Viewer brings interactive online recipes right to your kitchens with easy-to-use touchscreen terminals. North Star Recipe works best for? So um, where we've seen it working best is, is definitely restaurant groups that have multiple locations. Um, because of the nature of it, you, you can easily deploy, and you guys will hear a little bit later about how, how it works for Golden Corral in their multiple locations. Any business that's growing, whether it be number of locations, and then definitely businesses that have uh, frequent menu changes and or complex menus, different, uh, it, different recipes that are going into the kitchens, the, the system is flexible and uh, malleable for you to be able to, uh, to deploy those to the end user workstations where they're doing their work. And one of the key benefits, Jeremy, as far as saving money? So we'll go through just some of the key benefits for those that aren't familiar with the recipe viewer system. But uh, big, big time, I mean, big money savings as it relates to sending out the, the recipe books, sending out the paper recipes, shipping costs, having to laminate. Different, different restaurant groups are doing different things with recipes. Some have got laminates, some have got printed copies. Um, so there's there's lots of different things that, that you guys can, can use this system to save money as far as those paper costs going out to the rest of the restaurants. And one of the other key benefits, saving time. So you guys will hear later on from, uh, from the Golden Corral team just how it saved their recipe administrator time, but having all of the recipes in one system, not in, in docs or, or PDFs that are all dispersed, having it in a, in a database that's searchable is going to give you the ability to have all of these things get out to the field quickly and whoever's administrating that recipe, whether it be the culinary staff, the operations staff, the food and beverage people, they'll be able to update the recipes real time, giving, uh, giving the team members what they need in the field quickly. Thank you. And another one as far as agility. So being able to communicate information, like I said, real time from your corporate headquarters or wherever you're hosting the recipe server is gives you the ability to change on the fly. We talked in one of our other webinars, there was a spinach scare a few years ago. How do we get the spinach out to the restaurants and tell them, you know, we're changing out spinach for uh, arugula on all of these recipes instantly. In the old paper system, that was either a bunch of phone calls or was an email that you hoped that somebody would be going back to the kitchen. That agility and the ability to change on the fly, um, and again, Karen, maybe you can talk real quick about, about as you guys were going through and testing some different things, there was the, you had the ability where you guys changed it in one place and walked over to a recipe system and it automatically changed with, within, you know, a matter of walking across the hall. Yes, um, when we were um, rolling this out, we had people come in to, um, um, to train on the system and they were over in the food and beverage area and they were talking about, because they were actually training on new recipes and everything and, and um, the, um, head of that department was saying, oh, we just changed this this recipe. And when they came over here and Ann was given a demo of the recipe here, it was already changed. Just they crossed the hall and it was already changed. And it really um, was very impactful on them in, in showing how quickly it happened. And that's as quickly as it happens at the store as well. Exactly. So so as she talked about, whether it's in the corporate office and, and it's sitting on the same land or you're 500 miles away in a, in a restaurant, you're going to have that same agility to be able to make changes on the fly. Now, um, and if you can give us a little bit of history about uh, where Golden Crow has come from over the over the last couple decades and yeah. where you're headed now. Be glad to. So first of all, we're a privately held company and we just celebrated our 40th anniversary this year. So we first opened in 1973. It's, it's a really different concept from what we are today. We were in Small town America, we were serving fresh hand cut steaks in small 550 square foot buildings with about 245 seats. And it 
equated to maybe about 10 different steak offerings. And we stayed that way for about 15 years and saw that society was changing and wanting more than red meat and wanting more healthier foods and more variety and more choice. So we grew into what we are today, which is a real buffet concept. Um, much bigger building, 14,000 square feet and 500 seats. We're in 40 states. So we've got right around 500 stores, and in those stores, there's three management positions and an average of about 80 coworkers. And the product offerings are much, much larger, again, than they used to be when we first started or even than 10 years ago. We make almost all of our products, upper 90% uh, of our products are made fresh daily and they're made from scratch daily on the premise by bakers, meat cutters, fruit and, and vegetable prep, prep people and, and we have 10 to 14 meats on the bars, 12 to 20 hot veggies, so lots and lots of different items and menus that change constantly, be it a new promotion that we're rolling out or a tweak that we're doing on that recipe or something that we're putting in test. So the necessity to be able to get that recipe material to the coworkers, into the hands of the coworkers as quickly and accurately as possible is what really drove this product. So it was kind of a change within our concept in that we have lots and lots more recipes lots and lots and lots of fresh made product and we had to make sure that the coworker was looking at the most current recipes. With the paper book, oftentimes we would send out the paper manuals and then we'd send out recipe updates that never got in the book. So this is a way we can ensure that our customers are getting the food quality that we're after which is directly related to the coworkers making the recipes correctly. That's a perfect segue into the next, next portion, North Star Recipe and Golden, Golden Corral, by the numbers. <clears throat> As Anne had mentioned, um, you guys are challenged by recipes changing on a regular All basis. The time. <clears throat> Which can be a lot to manage for any, uh, any chain. You guys were have upwards of 800 recipes? That's just English, times two. Now we've got 1,600. Spanish too. And it seems that one of the one of the strong features within the system is that ability to go back and forth from English to Spanish. Yeah, um, yeah, that, that was a key thing that was important to everybody. And um, another another key thing is that you know, we have one database now. You know, previously we had um, two or more databases that the admin had to keep up with and she had to get the the recipes printed and then off to the publisher and then like Ann said out to the store and then they had to find their way to the books which that I don't think was a big success rate and um, and the books get to the different stations oh yeah which that oh, never yeah, yeah. so um, I know when we were piloting they, they would um, communicate those words. and then um, now we have one database, the change is done and immediately goes down to the stores and, and right after the rollout, um, or we adopted this, um, we um, had a um, recipe simplification project that, that, were, that we started um, with the food and beverage department and it would have been almost impossible the old way that they can go through and simplify the recipes and move quickly through their project. Yeah, so. Right now, you guys have uh, 123 company-owned uh, locations with Recipe Viewer installed. Correct. And 60 to 80 franchisees. Correct. So you you talked a little bit earlier just about kind of what you guys what you guys have found value in in getting it out to the franchise community. Can you talk a little bit about how it's impacted you guys' franchise community and kind of what you guys are hearing back from the field from the franchisees? Our franchisees and all of our operators, company or franchisee, love this system. I've been in um, restaurant technology for a long time 
and have never seen the positive reviews that we're seeing uh, from the system. We felt it was so important, again, to, to get the recipes into the hands of the coworkers. Our franchisees agree. That's the, one of the keys to high food quality and consistency. So we have mandated now that all of our stores will have it by the end of the year in 2014. And um, surprisingly enough, we're not getting any, any kickback from that. This is, a, this is a system that the operators embrace and see the value in and, um, and really want it in their stores. And in Golden Corral, we look real hard at the um, technology dollars we spend. I'm sure everybody does in the restaurant community. But um, I've been here again 27 years, it's, and I can tell you, it's hard to get a project uh, approved if it doesn't directly impact our guests. This one does, and it was. It's hard to say, here's a return on investment, but we saw it. Our food quality was up. Our operators loved it. Our coworkers love it. It's just a win-win all the way around. Thank you. And we put the recipes right in the hands of 9,000 plus coworkers for Golden Corral. Yeah, I was say, can you guys talk, Karen? Can you talk a little bit about where you guys have put it into the within the restaurants and kind of how they're using using the, the system? And we'll go through a few of the pictures of uh, of where we've taken you know taken shots of, of uh, the coworkers using it. Yeah, we um, we have over 800 recipes and times that by two for Spanish and um, and it's quickly to go. It's it's easy to go from English to Spanish. It, so that's important for like the coworkers and then the the and the English coming behind the Spanish speaking. Anyway, um, switching back and forth, and we have put them in like the bakery, the prep area, and the the, the, the grill area, and um, they're they're heavily used. I every time I go to a restaurant, the restaurant right up the street, I look to see if they're on and if they're being used, and and, and they they are. So, um, and then you can you can ask anybody about it, and they're just they're just thrilled to tell you their story. You know, they I think at first they were scared they were going to be taken away or something. Yeah. So they made, they made and, sure they knew, you know, how important they were for them. We started looking at this system back in 2009, and with everything, Gold Corral typically will move pretty slow to pilot and roll out through. We want to try and find a, an ROI if there's one. We want to make the right decisions. And in the beginning, we were putting in five or six of the viewers in some of our bigger stores. But as, as we watched it and measured it and watched the flow of the coworkers and the different stations they work at, we saw that we could limit that down to four or three. So that's even made it more affordable. Um, and, and made it a better fit so that, that some of them can share the, the um, viewers within different stations. And some franchisees may elect to put in five or six. It's their option. You can put in as many as you want. But it looks like about three or four is the good number on an average in our stores. Yeah, I'm saying to that point, Karen, you know, we just had lunch over at the store around the corner, and, and it was amazing to listen to just the coworkers talk about how much they love it and how can't they get another one in a certain area of the business okay. and, yeah. and things Correct. like that. And it was just great to hear um, very seldom, and as Gary and I were walking out of the restaurant, we said very seldom do you put technology in that people just, they clamor for and they and they say, you know what, I want it. So exactly. um, just a great example. So Agreed. Agreed. I apologize to everybody. I always forget to mention down in the bottom right-hand corner of your control panel allows you to put in questions. Feel free as we're going through the presentation to shoot your questions across to us. And if it fits into um, the slide we're working on, we'll bring it right up. Otherwise, we'll save it for the Q&A section at the end. So one system to develop recipes um, increased accuracy in much less time for you guys. Um, examples of, boy, at this point, everybody's adopted it so widely. Mm -hmm. What's the drawback? There's, there is none. There is no, one thing, this is a good picture you have on the screen too because it shows the orange and the yellow tags on some of those recipes and that's a, a simple and really important feature because remember we talked about how often we change and tweak recipes. 
Well, this shows if they're modified and if they're new. And Karen, you have to add in here, but I believe we have control over how long that modified flag will stay out there. So how long do we want to say that it's a new one to be a modified one? Yeah, yeah, you do. Yes, you do. And plus, um, if they just corrected a word or something, they can control that not to come up as modified oh, because okay. you know you don't want to overkill it. Right. With, with <laughs> yeah, and one of the things that we noticed in talking to the restaurant is they have they have the ability to just search for just new and modified recipes. So that alone, if they if they do a menu new menu rollout, if they use it for training, they can use it to understand what new recipes have come into into the restaurant through culinary department or food and beverage. So they just click a button, they can see all of the new recipes that got rolled out, go see the pictures of them, go see what's going on with those new recipes or modified recipes. So just a feature for those of you guys not familiar with the system, and we can do a deeper dive demo um, later, but kind of really the, the focus of this webinar was to talk about how Golden Crowd deployed it and what in what it did to, to add value to their business more than feature function button clicking of the product. So some of the some of the quotes that we got from um, the franchisees about recipe gear, they're great. We don't have to continually update the old paper recipes that get, get all beaten up if used at all. The convenience and ease of use is outstanding. I like that I can flip from Spanish to English. Very helpful. I also like the search feature. It makes for a great fix when I can't find the recipe. I need to go through, or I need to, through regular method. Excuse me. Thanks for the fantastic operational tool. So th these are all just some examples of some things that uh, Karen sent out, you know, to the franchise community, and and I mean, Karen, you can talk. I, I don't want to say you got flooded with emails, but uh, I know you only sent a few of them over. But can you talk a little bit about kind of the, the crux of what people had to say about it, more than maybe even what we could, what we already talked about? Right. I, I sent an email um, or a survey feedback to all the stores that uh, had the recipe years, and and it it was made. You know, normally you do things like that it's a couple days if you ever get it. You know, so um, but. The first day, I got several, and um, they pretty much had the same theme of um, it's a great tool, can't live without it, um, you know, better, more efficient than the old system. Um, it, it was pretty much the, the common theme. Makes training easier. Makes training easier, um, more accurate recipes. I think I think the um, the managers like because they can. Um, they can combine, come behind the coworker and verify that they've been um, looking at recipes. There's a history um, button there, so they can, um, you know, make sure that that, it, especially a new recipe, and that's what's so important about the modified tags. Um, you know, you get to where you know the recipe, so if you don't know that it's been updated, you kind of you don't know that there's been a change. You just think it's the same. So those are all nice triggers, and then a management tool to come behind and. And make sure that they're doing it as well. Some QA. Yeah. Another quote, this is a much better way than the recipe books that we had to keep updated because more times than not they didn't get updated and then you have employees learning old recipes. Which back to your point of managers coming behind and asking about using recipe viewer and being able to check through the history. And and to this point, there's a certain intimidation factor sometimes with having to go ask your manager for the recipe book for X recipe. Sometimes we found that coworkers would just kind of wing it if they didn't have it right at their fingertips because they were either embarrassed and didn't want to admit they didn't know it or maybe there was a language barrier or whatever. So with that recipe, if you were right in their face, right at their fingertips all the time, not, nothing prevents them from using it, they're accessing their recipes better and just confirming that they're remembering correctly or looking it up if they don't remember. Recipe Viewer is one of the best enhancements to our Golden Corral brand. It helps see visual pictures of the final product, step-by-step -step procedures to ensure we are completing the standards correctly. I would recommend this viewer to all franchise stores. This is an easier way to coach and develop not only our team member but upper management that doesn't perform these operations on a day-to-day -day basis to come in and see the step-by-step -step procedures and the end results. And again, can you guys talk a little bit about just how 
the franchise community might look, you know, in your guys' world. You guys are developing the recipes, but the franchisees typically weren't adopting your guys' technology solutions in a quick, ma quick way. Talk a little bit about how it's impacted even your franchise community with them being able to understand how to use the recipes. And you know that you're getting compliance on the quality of food so you can see that the quality of food is the same as it would be at a company store. Well, you're right. I mean, it's the same thing going back to making sure you've got the paper copy versus the um, the recipe viewer, and that doesn't matter whether it's a company or a franchise store, but, but what does matter and what we've seen um, being a franchisor is that sometimes it's very difficult to justify any type of um, expenditure that a franchisee is being asked to make. They don't want to spend money unnecessarily, and, and certainly not on technology in most cases. This system has not been that situation. They want it. They all want to get it. They understand why we are mandating it to the whole chain. There's been no pushback. Okay. And it's the only project I can probably say that about, ever. As we get into the Q&A section, again, just to remind you guys, in the bottom right-hand corner of the control panel, you can type in your question, and uh, we'd be happy to uh, either have Jeremy, Ann, or Karen answer the question. So we got a couple of questions coming in. Um, first question's related to the costs. Um, uh, and so, I mean, I, I'll, I guess I'll let you guys start there, and then we'll talk a little bit about the cost of the software. It, I mean, I'll talk a little bit. I should, let, me, let me start with talking about the cost of the software, and then you guys can talk about how you guys deployed it. We sell the product as both an on-premise and an off-premise solution. You can, um, for lack of a better term, buy it as a SaaS model from our company, where you're paying a monthly fee per restaurant. It's licensed per restaurant, not per viewer. Uh, unlike traditional point of sale, you know, software, so you buy it per um, end user deployment, not necessarily per recipe viewer terminal. And the hardware cost varies, and and uh, the the girls can talk about what different hardware options that they've chosen to put in. But uh, the hardware cost varies as well as the cost of getting uh, wires and or wireless and, and implemented into the restaurant and and uh, electrical to where the recipe viewers are, because you do have to get electrical. To where they are, you do have to get some form of connectivity, whether it be wired or wireless, right. into those environments. So, you guys want to talk a little bit about how the hardware. the hardware and what you guys have done with the hardware? Sure. We've looked at several different types of hardware, both industry hardened and consumer based, and we have both deployed in our stores. Um, we started off with industry hardened software. It works fine, it doesn't break. It's three times as expensive as the consumer software um, hardware. So we said, okay, well, we'll try some of this consumer um, all-in-one type of a touchscreen unit, and it's working great. Uh, we have not had a lot of failures, a few, but not enough, and it is our philosophy that this hardware being a third the price of the industry rugged hardware, and it is not a point-of-sale terminal, so it's not mission-critical. In the, because I have multiple ones, that if one breaks, I'll just buy another one, or you know, I have a depot plan. But it's it's cheaper to replace one of these consumer models um, because it's a third the cost, and so it's justifiable to me if it breaks in three years just to put another one up. So the hardware is working great. Actually, it's much better than our expectations. We also tested tablets; they work fine too but not in our world in that our restaurants are too busy, too many servers running around. We do the prep and the production and all of that stuff up front, not a lot of space. So the tablets broke quickly, and then the coworkers got nervous about even using them at all. And so they were, they were pushing back. So we've found, for our world right now, um, we're putting in these all-in-one terminals and mounting them. They're not mobile. They're not Wi-Fi. They're they're cable. It's working good. Yeah, we have had some success with customers using tablets in the field, um, not in a large scale, just because, uh, as um, the team from Golden Crow would talk about, 800 recipes. They've got a lot to search through, and so 
um, the smaller screen size on a tablet just didn't, wouldn't work in those environments, but we had somebody that had a lot less recipes and already had uh, um, already had a uh, wireless infrastructure. They put some tablets into tests and and uh, mounted them then, though uh, I know in Golden Corral's test they did not have them mounted and they were mobile and so they were having to plug them in. This group mounted them as, as they would a fixed position terminal and uh, and with that they found success with it. So I think the cost is variable depending upon what you're what you're looking for and the number of units you put in. Uh, you might have heard earlier in the webinar they, they started with five and I think ultimately landed on four because that in their environment that's what they needed. Um, one of our other customers started with four, and they've now expanded to twelve because of the way that they run their kitchen. So it all kind of just depends on how you're how you're running stuff. So. And then the next question speaks to uh, how Recipe Viewer integrates with prep or par levels. And you guys don't use that portion, but Jeremy, you can speak to other customers. Um, we integrated with. So. Um, I don't know exactly where that question is coming from, but uh, but I, I can uh, take a guess. So we do have the ability to do both prep recipes and what we call finished good recipes, and we, we have the ability to break those up. They're all kind of the same recipes, but one of our other casual dining chains does what they call prep recipes that go back to the back kitchen, and based on their login, they get those prep recipes, which is for the sauces and those kind of things that come up to the front of the line. Uh, so. We put them in the prep area. I believe the Golden Crowl, you guys have also put them in the prep area. Almost everything you guys do is prep because it is a buffet. So it's all either you're prepping either finished goods or you're prepping doughs and baked sauces whatever. and baked, baked goods. And so in your prep area, how have you guys deployed it? And, and are you finding as much use in the prep area as you are on the finish line? Oh, yeah. Got you. Oh, Lord. So as far as par levels, we it's not a full prep management system where you where you're taking theoretical usage from the from the point of sale and deciding how much you need to prep. We don't have any of that integrated at this point. You're gonna have to still get that data out of your food cost management system and or your point of sale system to decide how much you need to prep of things and then use the recipe viewer to distribute the information into the hands of the team members that are doing that prep. And you touched on um, logins. Can you speak to Jeremy um, user privileges and security as far as um, those login streams or user privilege streams? So we do have the capability within the system to lock down the portal to IP specific. So it's a, it's a it's a Microsoft based tool that uses the Internet Information Server technology to deploy the recipes. We have the ability to lock down that where you can get to the recipe viewer from, whether you want it only on the VPN, whether you want it um, you know, only from specific IP addresses from the restaurant. But we also have the ability to have login, um, a login screen similar to what you would find on a point of sale terminal, where you log in and depending upon your login, you're going to get specific different, um, uh, different criteria and different information. Different recipes are going to show up. You're going to get different uh, um, Sorry, you're going to get the ability to have it show up always in Spanish if you're a Spanish-speaking user, or one of our concepts has two different concepts on one recipe viewer um, database. Based on they log in on, under one login, they get one set of recipes. They log in on a different um, login, they get a different set of recipes. So um, I, don't know, I think that answers your question. Yeah, definitely. Um, one of the questions is what happens when the internet goes down? Do you guys face that at all? Well, what? Well, surprisingly, that doesn't happen a whole lot. Um, um, but what we have in place, or what we're working towards right now, is um, an offline mode. And what we're doing is on our back office computer, we will have a replica of the web server at each store. And if the recipe viewer um, goes offline, it will fail over to that that server and um, that's uh, that that'll be our solution we're testing it in our lab and um, you know trying to package it so we can deploy it but so, I, I don't get a lot of calls um, about them not being able to get to the recipes which yeah. that was a surprise for me I thought I would be getting a lot more yeah so it is definitely internet based so if you if internet goes down we have we've had some clients do like Karen just mentioned where they have an offline copy that is within their environment. We have another customer that has two data centers um, 
that are geographically located, and they have the rescue viewers point to different ones. So one's in a data center in Chicago, the other one's in a data center in Los Angeles, and depending upon what side of the country you're on, it goes to one or the other. If the internet goes down local at the restaurant, we have some customers that have put in 4G cards into their um, sonic walls or whatever their router of choice is, so they put a 4G card in and pay for 4G because they want it for credit cards and other means, it's not just for recipes. So they have a backup redundant internet connection for 40 bucks a month within the within um, within the restaurant. And ironically, there's there, there's something that we haven't tested yet, but one of my customers just brought up last week to me or two weeks ago, which was there's some now some 4G pay as you go, pay as you use based internet. So you don't have to pay $40 a month, but you pay as you use it. So if internet's constantly going down, then you're using more data. But if internet's staying up, you don't have to you don't have to pay. We have not tested that, but that's a that's an option as well to have backup internet. You know, so you plug in that 4G card into the router, but potentially using a pay as you go service and then only when your basic internet goes down or your your in store internet goes down, then it goes to that. So those are just some different options that you guys consider out there. Um, I know a lot of people, and and quite honestly, I think you guys also still do have a single copy of a printed recipe book within the restaurant. Is that not correct? Well, yeah, there are some around, but eventually that will go away. That's okay. just getting um, timed out until everybody has viewers. So that's you know we're that's one thing we're not realizing yet is the savings of stopping printing because we still are in the middle of a low out. Got it. And I do know that um, one of our other customers does keep a printed recipe book. And, and one of the other questions is how do you print, you know, can, can you link to a printer? And I know you guys do have the ability through the recipe editor tool to print the recipes for the, can you guys talk a little bit well, about that? Because I know we just talked to the recipe administrator earlier today. And well, at the store level, um, the we don't have any printers hooked to the viewers that are out in the um, prep areas, but on the back office, um, the manager can go back there and, and print a recipe. And I mean, it's it, it, it's it, it's pretty it's pretty good. I mean, it's not like it's black published. and white. Yeah, and it's, and it's, but it's all they need. So if uh, so, they can do that. And um, and of course, here on the admin side, um, they can print recipes. And there's some templates that the admin can print. A published version. So let's say if there's five recipes that, like, okay, these need to be, you know, printed and sent out. Since, especially since we're still in a transitional phase, that they can still do that for the few recipes that they need to, and there'll be um, production published versions of the recipe. Okay. And um, Jeremy already answered the cloud-based or location-based earlier. Um, great questions. Thank you guys so much. We have to. Um, we're running short on time here this afternoon. We're really cognizant and appreciative of you guys making the investment um, and participating with us today. A huge thank you to both Ann and Karen. You guys have been extraordinary hosts for the last no, you're 24 welcome. hours. Thank you. Glad to do. Um, folks, visit our blog at, at cbsnorthstar.com. Uh, you can find us under the blog Restaurant Technology Guys, or you can hit us at restauranttechnologyguys.com. Um, if you guys have questions, please email them in. Gary and I call us. Um, if you guys want to get connected with um, Ann, Ann or Karen about you know talking offline with them, I'm sure they'd be happy to take your phone call. If you're already an existing recipe viewer customer, which I know you guys like to show up, show up to these, that's great as well. I know you guys like to share best practices with each other. I know one of our other restaurant groups um, showed up last time and asked a bunch of questions. And so if there's stuff that you guys come up with, please contact myself or Gary, and we'll get you guys um, – contact information or, or reach out to them and say, hey, you know what, We're, we heard you on the recipe viewer webinar and uh, I'm sure the girls will get back to you and, and talk with you about what you need. Absolutely. Our next, uh, our next webinar in our series is North Star Order Entry. We're going to do a deep dive into the new iPad-based POS from CBS. It's on October 8th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. And with that, we'll sign off. Thank you, Jeremy. Thanks, guys. And thank, thank you, you Karen. Thank you. Thanks.